Hey, welcome to Mooney Reads. My name is Beck, and today I'm going to be talking to you about the books that I am in the middle of reading. This might not seem like something that should need a whole entire video for, but I am really bad about starting books and then saying that I'm going to read them eventually. Sometimes I make plans for them and sometimes I don't, which results in, I guess, accidental DNFing. And I don't really want to do that. So I'm going to talk about the books that I am either currently reading or more recent books that I have kind of softly DNF'd that I don't really want to DNF. Um, once I go through and talk about the books, I'm going to talk about my plans for how I'm going to read them. And I think I'm going to start chronologically. Now, most of these I have started within the past six months, but there are a few exceptions to that. One of the exceptions to that is The Essential Dykes to Watch Out For by Alison Bechtel. This is the whole collections of that comic. It was written over the span of several decades. Um, and this basically talks about just the lesbian experience in the 80s and 90s, just like a cute comic about the lesbian community. I started this book, I believe in the last half of last year, I got a free 30-day trial for Kindle Unlimited, and I started to read this. Um, the 30 days was over, and eventually I did get my own copy. I bought a used copy, which is why there's no book jacket, but, you know, it was cheap, so I can't complain too much. Um, and then I started reading it from there. The next book I have been reading since November or December, and that is Asada Shakur's autobiography. This is one that I have been meaning to restart. I think it was on my February TBR, and I've read little bits and pieces a little bit in this year. Um, for those who don't know, Asada Shakur, it was a uh, figure in the Black Panthers, and this is looking at her whole life because it's an autobiography, but it's framed around this specific instance where she was shot by the police and framed for killing one of the other policemen. So it kind of takes you through that instance and her childhood kind of weaving uh, those things together. It is super interesting. And, oh, you know, with all of these, I'm really looking forward to reading all of them. And I was really excited about most of them. But I just need to pick them back up. I don't have any logical explanation for why I stopped reading them. My brain just got bored or something. I think with Asada specifically, um, it was just really sad. And I guess my brain noped out of that, even though I've read plenty of sad stuff since then. I just need to buckle down and read this. I got to about page 59. Editing back here because naturally I left out a few things. I have a book that I started last summer at some point, I believe, and that is Black on Both Sides, A Racial History of Trans Identity by C. Riley Snorton. I read chapter one last year, and then I started in, um, and I think I read a little bit more of it sometime this year. Um, I had plans to read this for a few of the months, but it hasn't happened. Like the title says, this is about um, the history of blackness and gender nonconformity. And it is really good so far, but it's also very dense. Uh, hence, kind of, I think, why it took me a little while to get into it. Um, I'm, I'm still really stoked for it, though. Um, this is definitely one that I've been wanting to read for a while. Then we get into books that I actually read this year. I started Nobody Passes, edited by Matilda Bernstein Sycamore, um, during Pride Month. And this is basically an anthology of many different people talking about gender, kind of being in the middle in one way or another. Uh, but it kind of goes beyond gender. People talk about race, they talk about disability. There's a whole lot of really neat stuff in here. The Wisdom of the Enneagram by Don Richard and Russ Hudson. And this is a book that talks about the Enneagram, which if you don't know what that is, it's a personality framework. Uh, it's one that I found very useful. There are basically nine personality types and it goes through and outlines each personality type and how they relate to each other. I won't go too far into it, but it's been really helpful for me. 
and I've read a few other books on it, and it was my intention to not like sit down and read it from cover to cover, maybe like take my time with it, but not months long take my time with it, more like a month or two take my time with it. And I've actually gotten a decent amount, amount of the way through. I finished all of like the first section, you can see all my tabs, and I started in on the section for nines. I do plan on reading the other ones, but I'm a nine, and I want to read mine first because I'm impatient. Um, but I've gotten probably about halfway through the nine section, and I just need to finish it. Next, I have intersectionality as critical social theory by Patricia Hill Collins. If you've watched a lot of my videos, you'll probably know how much I adore Patricia Hill Collins. Black Feminist Thought is actually on the bookshelf behind me, which you can't really see that well because of my glare, but that's fine. Um, she's a Black Feminist scholar, and this is one of her newer books. In this, she talks about, you know, what intersectionality after actually means and how the community of scholars needs to work with actual people on the ground and figuring out what, you know, what doing intersectionality and using it intersectionality actually is on a practical level in practice. In that same month, which I believe was July, the fuckathon was happening because The Source of Self Regard by Toni Morrison was the group book. And I definitely started it and it was really fantastic. This is a collection of essays by Toni Morrison uh, looking at a number of different issues. Um, I think a lot of the ones that I had been reading really focused on race. I got to page 75. I also started reading Revolution Manifesto, Understanding Marx and Lenin's Theory of Revolution. I started this for the fuckathon. And I think I read the first chapter during that month, and then I read the next chapter a couple months later. This is looking at the works of Marx and Lenin, contextualizing it, um, and talking about it just in general. Um, I am currently about two chapters in. Next, I have a book that I was ecstatic to find in the first place, and I was really excited to get into actually reading it. And that is Tinderbox, The Untold Story of the Upstairs Lounge Fire and the Rise of Gay Liberation by Robert Fielser. Like the title says, um, this is focused on the Upstairs Lounge Fire. A lot of people don't know what that event is, but it was actually the largest anti-gay hate crime on the books until the Pulse shooting. Uh, but it was largely ignored by media outlets, even though over 30 people died, which was large even for... Uh, the fires of the era. So I was really stoked to find this because when I had first heard about it, uh, it was really hard to find much of anything on the topic. So this was a story that I am still really looking forward to. Then I believe the next month for the Heart-a-thon, I started to read Revolutionary Suicide by Huey P. Newton. Huey P. Newton is one of the leaders of the Black Panthers, so this goes really well with Asada. But this goes into his life, his politics, and his experience within the Black Panther Party. Another book that I have started reading and have not finished is Stamped from the Beginning by Ibram X. Kendi. But this one, I've gotten through the prologue. Uh, this is basically a really big history of race and racism in the United States. He's focusing on a few specific public figures to look at um, racism uh, and how the nature of it has changed. Next, I have Shadows of the Dark Crystal by J.M. Lee. This is based off of the movie The Dark Crystal. It's actually um, a prequel to the original Dark Crystal movie, the Jim Henson production, and I've been super excited to read these for a while. This was actually not on any TBR. I ended up picking it up on a whim near the end of the reading rush, and I was actually impressed with myself with how, you know, it, it takes me a while to get into any high fantasy, which is why I don't read a lot of it. Um, if I read, if I read sci-fi fantasy, it's either graphic novel form or it's like sci-fi that I don't have to think that much about the mechanics of. Um, but this is kind of more high fantasy. And I was starting to get into kind of the groove of the society. And part of that is because I already like the Dark Crystal. This is just kind of adding to the lore in a lot of ways. So I am 
super stoked for this book, but I only got to page 61. I think with with the most with the vast majority of these, I don't stop near the end or in the middle. It's between page like 40 and 60. If someone could explain that to me, that would be great. Next, I have Nama by Sarah Blake, which I have been again, I, I was super stoked to read this. I actually it was delayed uh, getting to me because of COVID, and I was really irritated about it. And I've had this on two different TBRs, and I have just not finished it. I got to page 55, and I think the reason I didn't end up finishing it was because I was in the middle of reading a lot of other intense books, so I needed something a bit more chill. This isn't the most, like, emotionally racking thing on the planet, like, I'd been reading The House of Impossible Beauties, which the ending is just devastating, to be honest. Um, this isn't quite to that level, at least not in the first 50 pages. Uh, but this is a biblical retelling. Um, it focuses on uh, the Noah's Ark story, but it focuses on Noah's wife. And it's sort of a queer retelling. And she does a lot of questioning, you know. Um, so I have a lot of interest in this book. Um, and a lot of, like, thoughts on where it could possibly go. I just haven't finished it. Then I have Macbeth by Shakespeare. I started this for ShakeTube and then just did not finish it. I did read the first essays kind of in the beginning of the book. I kind of just skimmed the one on Shakespeare himself because I've taken a Shakespeare class. I actually kind of took it, like, one and a fourth time, so I've seen all of the bio stuff at least twice. While I do actually want to get to a biography of Shakespeare, I don't necessarily want to read another kind of short essay that's going to be similar to ones that I've already read. But I read the other ones that kind of look more at Macbeth, and I got to Act 1, Scene 3, or a little, a little ways through Act 1, Scene 3. So I did not get very far, but I do want to read it. I actually bought this copy specifically for ShakeTube because I didn't want to have to read it out of my big pretty copy, um, so I got a standalone. This next book I started last month for the Latinxathon. That is Borderlands La Frontera by Gloria Enzaldúa. I got through the first chapter of this one, and it is a super interesting book, and I've read it some individual pieces by Gloria Enzaldúa. She writes a whole lot on being between culturally, um, so between countries, between cultures, and so forth. And there's so much valuable stuff, but it takes a lot of brain power to read. At least it takes a lot of brain power for me to read because part of it is in Spanish. And it's not just like one or two words every once in a while, but whole sections. So with those sections, I have been putting them into Google Translate and reading them. And I want to be able to read them and digest them and then read what she has to say about them. I don't want to just skim over and just read what I can. I want to be intentional about it. So this is something that I kind of need to read when I have a, a bit more brain power than I did near the end of last month, apparently. Um, if anybody knows of any good guides to go with this that might have translations, let me know because I looked for one and it doesn't look like that exists. So hopefully I'm overlooking something because that would, it would make my life easier, but also I would like to read actual translations and not whatever Google can piece together, which is not going to be as effective. This next book I also started last month, and that is When You Ask Me Where I'm Going, which is a uh, fiction book told in poetry that focuses on this young girl it talks about her relationship with beauty standards and things like that. So it talks about um, a decent bit about race and beauty standards. Um, it's focused a bit on like body hair and femininity and stuff like that. Um, it's really interesting so far. I'm on page 40. Another book that I believe I started reading last month was An Arc of Gender Queer which is edited by Ricky Wolchkins and several other people. It's an anthology looking at um, people who queer gender. So this is some people who actually identify as genderqueer, but there are also other different sorts of trans people. Uh, there are a couple of entries from lesbian femmes talking about gender and how gender is queered in their experience. 
Um, so there's a lot of really interesting stuff. This was originally put out in 2002, I believe. And this arc is for the Kindle version that they, they recently added a couple things to the beginning and then re-released it. And I think I am uh, a little bit more than halfway done with that. The next books that I'm in the middle of, I've actually started this month. So the first is The Undocumented Americans by Carla Cornejo Vincencio. For this book, she went and interviewed a number of undocumented Americans and also utilized her own story in order to make a more cohesive story. And she's kind of going from location to location and she's telling individual stories. But more than that, she's telling the story of kind of the location. It's super interesting so far and you can actually see my first thoughts on it in my most recent video blog if you're interested. The next book I also started reading in the middle of that blog, and that is Red Dragon by Thomas Harris. This is actually a buddy read that I'm doing. The original kind of intention was for us to read uh, Red Dragon, Silence of the Lambs, and Hannibal all in the month of October, but I think that we both knew that neither of us were actually going to finish it. Um, the person I'm buddy reading it with is also still in Red Dragon. I think they're further in it than I am, but this focuses on, uh, well, the series focuses on Hannibal Lecter. This one so far is focused on Will Graham, who, from my understanding, was the person who caught Hannibal Lecter, um, but he's in the middle of trying to catch another serial killer at the moment. So it's kind of a detective novel. I know that the series turns more horror-ish later on, and I am looking forward to the genre shift. <laughs> and the other book that I forgot uh, was the Rocky Horror Picture Show comic book. It's literally the Rocky Horror Picture Show, but in graphic novel form. And this is one that I am intentionally in the middle of reading, which is why I forgot to mention it in the first place, I think. Then, the most recent book that I have started is Universal Harvester by John Darneal. I actually started this yesterday, and I am on page 49. I am only reading it in the daylight because I am a baby. There's nothing super scary at this point, but it's, um, you know, I, I mean, it is kind of a slow-moving story, but it's not slow in a way that I'm mad about just because I like character-driven stuff. Some things are slow in a way that I am maybe a little mad about, but we won't talk about that. Um, the horror aspects start a little bit more subtly. The whole premise of this is that uh, the main character works at this video rental store. A couple of people have brought back tapes. Uh, they said, you know, there's some stuff on here that's not supposed to be there. And... Eventually, they kind of look into this and kind of go on this journey to figure out, you know, what is this and why is it on here? I'm going to stop myself there because I have lots of thoughts on kind of how he puts in the scary elements, but it's not super, super scary yet, but I'm a baby and I can tell that it's on its way. So those are all of the books that I'm currently reading. But not really, only some of them I'm actually currently reading. But these are all of the books that I've started reading and need some sort of plan for. The book that I'm pretty sure I'm going to finish next is Universal Harvester. Of course, there's a chance that I'm going to pick up another smaller book. I've got a short story collection, I've got a couple of graphic novels on my TBR, and I might knock those out, but I'm not currently reading those, so they don't count. Universal Harvester is probably the next book that I'm currently reading that I will finish. Now, there are a few books that I think I'm going to be able to finish, if not this month, the next month. I don't think that I need to plan anything super specific for them. And that is um, The Red Dragon, When You Ask Me Where I'm Going, and The Undocumented Americans. None of these, I mean, Red Dragon is kind of chunky, but it's a buddy read, and I'm pretty sure I can get through it. Um, when You Ask Me Where I'm Going is poetry. It's going to be really easy to get through. And The Undocumented Americans is not that big. And I've started all of these fairly recently, so I have a decent amount of security that I'll finish them relatively soon. Then going to the Rocky Horror Picture Show comic book. Um, I am reading this for the Rocky Horror Readathon, and the prompt that I'm using it for is Antissa. 
which is to read part of a book at the beginning of the readathon and part of the book at the end. And so I read the first section of this at the beginning of the readathon, and I can't read the other one, the other part of the book, until like the 30th or 31st. So that's my plan for that book. Now, with most of these other ones, I need to make a plan because I've been reading them for a really long time. A lot of this is going to involve me being intentional about including these books that I have not finished yet on my TBRs. Um, I feel like in the beginning of the year, I might have included more books that I was part of the way through on my TBRs. I could be totally wrong because I haven't looked to verify that. But this is a big ass stack and I need to figure out how to control my life. And honestly, this has me rethinking my whole nonfiction November TBR because I've kind of already filmed it, but I'm probably going to change some things, so I'll probably refilm it. So if I'm wearing this shirt and that TBR, you'll know. There is one exception, um, a book that I don't think that I need to do a definitive plan for. And that's The Essential Dykes to Watch Out For. Uh, this was written over decades. I don't want to sit and read it all in one sitting. That's not what it was made to do. I mean, I this isn't something that I need to every single month. I have to read this amount of pages. I just don't think that that's necessary. Um, so I'm not going to make a definitive plan for this one. So to start off some of this planning, I think I'm going to start with two books that are pretty well related, um, and that is the autobiography of Asada Shakur and Revolutionary Suicide. I have Revolutionary Suicide on my TBR for October. Um, I honestly have not gotten into reading any pieces of it. And I think one thing that might be holding me back a little bit from reading Revolutionary Suicide is the fact that I haven't finished Asada. And I told myself that I was going to finish Asada before getting into some of the other books about that same time period that were kind of adjacent to this. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to plan to read Asada first and then go back to Revolutionary Suicide and then I can continue on with um, Autobiography of Malcolm X and a few other books that I have of that time period. So that's the plan for this. I can maybe put Asada in nonfiction November. I will definitely put Asada somewhere within um, the Clear Your Shit readathon, which takes place over November and December. So I definitely want to finish Asada before the end of the year. And then if I finish Revolutionary Suicide by the end of the year, I would be very surprised, but elated. Um, but chances are I'll probably read this in January or February. Next, I suppose I'll get into some of the books on race. So Borderlands, La Frontera, this is one that I'm going to need to have a lot of focus when looking at. So I think this one I may attempt to make a schedule for because I don't anticipate finishing all of this in one month. I don't think that that's realistic, especially with the way that my focus has been. So I think I'm going to make a list of when I want what chapters read by. Um, this isn't one that I'm going to make myself finish before the end of the year or something like that. I'm going to take my time be sure that I read all of it, um, but have a schedule so it's not just a free-for-all like the Alice and Bechdel comics. Now, with the Toni Morrison book and with Intersectionality as Critical Theory, I honestly think that I need to sit and make a part of a TBR. Now, which one I prioritize? I honestly think I'm going to prioritize Intersectionality as Critical Theory is the one that I've been the most excited about, and it is the one... Um, that I, I just think it's going to be a really important read. So I think I'm going to focus on finishing this one first and then get into the source of self-regard. I know they're very different types of books because this one is, you know, it's essays. There are pieces of it that are kind of memoir and this one is maybe more academic. But I've got to focus on at least one thing at a time to a certain degree. Clearly not to a very high degree because my brain bounces around all over the place, which is why I have like a million books in this video. So intersectionality is critical theory. I will prioritize first, whether it will happen in November or December is yet to be seen. But then after that, I'll get into the source of self-regard. Now, 
stamped from the beginning, I think is going to go a little bit more on the back burner. I wanted to read this along with a, an Instagram read along that was going on, but it didn't happen. And I think this is going to be an interesting and valuable book. However, I have other books on race and racism that I really want to read, and I just think I'm going to end up reading those first. Simple as that. I've got to pick something and start from somewhere. So this one is probably going to go a little bit on the back burner. I may save this for Tome Topple. I'm not 100% sure when the next uh, round of that is, but this is a possible contender for that. Then I have the LGBT books. Nobody Passes, and Tinderbox. With both of these, I have multiple books that deal with adjacent topics that I would like to see. I have a whole history TBR that I've been wanting to get through, and I haven't made a TBR for it, um, mostly because it will make me want to buy more books. Uh, but I do have a fair number of gender theory books that I want to read too. So these are kind of separate subjects, but they're still really similar. Um, and since I've started them both, I may need to pick which one I want to focus on first in a certain way, and I think I want to focus on Tinderbox first because I've been really excited about this, and this is a subject that, you know, I haven't been able to learn as much about because there wasn't a whole lot out there. Um, I'll leave a link in the description to my Instagram post where I talk a little bit more about why this is kind of important to me, but I think this is one that I'm going to prioritize, and you might see this on my Nonfiction November TBR. So far as Nobody Passes goes, I did kind of want to turn this into a slow read too because there are so many different perspectives and so many things to get from it. Um, I don't think that I'll need as slow of a read as I was originally thinking because these aren't really that long. But I may plan a slow read for this similar to Borderlands. Um, Borderlands, I think I might take my time a little bit more with. We'll see there's clearly no date set in stone yet. But this one might be a planned slow read. So far as planning goes for Black on Both Sides, I'm thinking that this is one that I'm going to have to plan for next year, hopefully towards the beginning of next year. So far as planning goes for Revolution Manifesto, I think this is one that I just need to make a part of my TBR. I mean, clearly I did that the first time that I intended to read it, but um, in order to finish it, I think I'm just going to need to pick some time to put it on another TBR. Um, I'm thinking that this is probably going to be one that I shoot for uh, reading in January. Now, Wisdom of the Enneagram, I don't think is actually going to take that long to read because I know how long it took me to read what I've already read out of it. And I really sat, this is probably like two, maybe three sittings. Um, so I should be able to just read this. Um, maybe I can put it in next month or something like that. Really, a lot of the Enneagram books that I've been reading... I haven't really put on my TBRs, and I've forgotten some in my wrap-ups. So, I don't think this is going to be very hard to fit in. Finally, we have fiction, which I only have three vic three fiction books on this, which is a little wild. So far as Macbeth goes, I do really want to read Macbeth, and I was super stoked to get back into Shakespeare because it has been a hot minute since I have read or watched any Shakespeare. Actually, that's a lie. I read the graphic novel of Hamlet. Before then, it had been a while since I had uh, consumed any Shakespeare-related content. But honestly, this is probably going to have to wait until next year. I just have a lot of other things that I want to do. I think I'm going to try to put this on the Clear Your Shit Readathon. And uh, this will probably be one that I don't get to until November. But hopefully... I'll finish it in November. Then I have Shadows of the Dark Crystal, which I, like I said, I'm excited about it. I don't think it's going to be on the top of my TBR. I'm going to try to read it sometime next year. And, you know, it would be nice to get through all three of the books that I have of this. Um, and maybe number four if I get it next year. Um, so hopefully I will read this within the first three months or so of next year. We'll see what happens. I haven't really thought 
that far ahead necessarily. Then we have Nama, which, like I said, I was ecstatic to finally get. Um, and I think I'm going to put this on my Clear Your Shit TBR. I think it should fit one of the prompts, so I'm going to try to read this in November or December. So hopefully that's all of my books. This is all for this video. Hopefully you've enjoyed seeing the mess that my currently reading shelf has become. Hopefully I get through most of these roughly in the order that I want to get through them in. If you've read any of these books, let me know about them down below, what you thought about them. If you have a problem like I do and are reading a bunch of books at the same time or are part of the way through a bunch of books, let me know how many books you've got going on. Thank you all so much for watching. Bye.